Okay, so sometimes Raspberry Pis aren't available in all regions. So on the right here, I have a Brazilian 3B Plus, and the two red Pis are Chinese exclusives. The Compute Module Zero, however, if we click on Buy Now on the website, it says rest of the world, there are no resellers. But if we go to China, you then need to go to Industry or Education. And one comes up under Industry, which is EDATEC. And thankfully, they've sent me one. So this is the Compute Module Zero. It was confusing when I was searching for it because I was searching for CM0, as is written on the board. But you have to search for it, Compute Module and Zero with a Z. And then it shows up. As you can see, it's connected to an EDATEC board. The CM0 is just this little tiny bit here. And there's an antenna. And I guess the reason that it's got this cardboard is so that it doesn't touch any of the other parts of the board. I've got it running on my lap dock at the moment with HTARP and P-Sensor. So it's been running for a little bit. We've gone up to 49 degrees so far. There's no cooler on there at the moment. But let's disconnect it and have a closer look at the board. So we've got the same CPU as a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and also the same RAM as well, so 512 megabytes of RAM. But we also have some storage. So here is an eMMC drive, and I'll show you in a minute on the screen what capacity it is. They do an 8 gig or a 16 gig. And Raspberry Pis don't normally have onboard storage, but the compute modules tend to have that as an option. We've got USB-C for power. We've got a couple of display and camera ports here. Nice to see a full-size HDMI, couple of USB-A sockets, and also Ethernet. You can see we've got GPIO pins. We've got something here which is probably power over Ethernet, I would think. We'll have a look on the EDATEC website in a minute. So if I move this Wi-Fi antenna around here out of the way, we can then show this part of the board. So we've got a battery, so a real-time clock battery. We've got a switch here and also a button as well. And some more pins here, SD card slot. I don't think there's anything significant on the, on the base. And there it is. And just now I was using it on Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi is usually quite weak in this room. The Wi-Fi was actually pretty decent. So let's plug it in and use this to show the specs on the EDATEC website and also on the Raspberry Pi website. We've got some size comparisons here. So this is the Pi Zero 2W with the same processor. Here's a Raspberry Pi 4. Then we've got the Compute Module Zero next to the Compute Module 5. It's all plugged in here. And the operating system was already pre-installed for me so I haven't had to do anything. And as you can see, SSH is enabled. So if we launch FastFetch, I'll do this in real time. Yeah, that was all right. Fast fetch. So this is, funny enough, it comes up as Raspbian. I'm sure it says Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, so 13 Trixie. This is the 32-bit version. And you can see here, Compute Module 0, Rev 1.0. Linux kernel 6.12.47. My display is running in 1920 by 1080. And we'll go down a bit. Here we can see the processor, the one gigahertz. We can see the RAM that's on there. So 425, it's 512 megabytes of RAM. And the disk, so I've got the 16 gig version. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna try the web browser and see, if, see what we get. It's not recommended. It actually warns you. I'm going to give you reading static pages, so we we may be all right. But as you can see, uh, the web browser is definitely not the strong point on something with so little RAM. It, certain other things, uh, things like RetroPie, actually work really well, and certain emulators, because they're older, just, just run really fast. To be fair, it is doing it. Uh, I would put up RAM usage, but trouble is that's going to use more resources and I think it needs everything it can. So if we do a search. So let's click on hardware. Uh, 
and I'm hoping it shows on this page. Oh, we ran out of ramlet. Let's try re reloading it. And my trick would usually be to put the Puffin web browser onto the operating system because the Puffin web browser uses a cloud-based system, so it doesn't use as much resources. But because it's an eMMC drive, I can't extract it. Uh, and PyApps doesn't tend to work well on, a, on something with so little RAM. And also the web browser, you have to go to the PyApps website and so on. So yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously not intended for a web browser. But the eMMC drive in it, the reason they do that on compute modules is, um, well, it's more secure because you can't just swap out the operating system. Also devices with eMMC drives default to booting from that method. So if you put an SD card in, it's not going to boot from an SD card. So if you've got it on, I don't know, signage or something in a, uh, say, an airport or a train station, you don't want someone to put in a, a, an SD card with something offensive in there. So this is much more locked down, much harder to access. Right, is it found hardware? Okay, so I'm going to abandon that idea because it keeps reloading. But I'm going to show you the current power consumption, which is running at 2 watts. So very, very little power to power this little board. And obviously if you quit out of a graphical user interface, so close the browser, is it Alt F4? Yeah. I guess it's gonna be Pi and Raspberry to log in. And then if we were to do fast fetch, you'll see that it, it runs nice and fast with the terminal, because obviously there's not a lot going on. I'm gonna see if I can install some uh, terminal games sudo at install bastet oh it's there so if i do bastet to launch it here we go this is a game of tetris in the terminal i don't know if i've shown this one before that's cool though isn't it yeah nothing wrong with that oh yeah, happy with that. If I do escape, I don't have to quit out. Probably control C. Yeah. It's cool that it still stays there. There's Pac-Man for console as well. Rather than type all that again. Oh, we're there. Press any key. <laughs> Shame it's not full screen. Oh, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Okay, so I'm back in a Pi 5 just to show the specs. Compute Module Zero is a system on module based on the RP3A0 chip. Uh, core processing capability of the Pi Zero 2W in a compact embedded form factor. Onboard RAM, optional Wi-Fi connectivity, four lane CSI and DSI for image and video capture and display applications. Compute Module Zero enables developers and system designers to integrate Raspberry Pi functionality into a wide range of custom hardware. And we can see the specs on here. So it's USB 2.0. The Wi-Fi is the older 2.4 gigahertz, 8 gig or 16 gig flash, 512 RAM always, and it's DDR2 RAM, and that gigahertz quad-core processor. Let's have a look on Edetech's website. So they're calling it a CM0 Nano. Right, let's see if we can translate that. So CR2032 battery as a real-time clock. So IPEX1, oh, it's the connector for the antenna. Oh yeah, it is power over ethernet, that connection. It's nice to see a USB-C connection. Right, what are these two? I would say, oh, RPI boot. So the same as the compute module four and five. So how do I know which one's which? Well, I guess it's the opposite of what I've got it on at the moment. Okay, let's try and connect it up and let's see if we can install something else on it. Now we need a decent data cable for this one. And this is USB 3.2. So USB-A into the Pi. Five, and then USB-C into here and I'm guessing you switch this now this is my version of KDE Plasma that I'm using here and I put some instructions for RPI boot which is to write to an eMMC drive in a Raspberry Pi and they're in documents because I realized I probably wouldn't remember so it's just this bit so CD USB boot, and we'll copy that into a terminal, and then sudo RPI boot, and hopefully we get some positive messages back 
from the zero. Oh no, it's loading. Oh, it's there. Okay, so let's download an OS. Uh, so let's go with Diet Pie because it made some big claims about being a lighter operating system. So download and zero two and download. Shouldn't take very long because it's not got, oh, I've already got this version, have I? Unless they use the same one for various, well, I just remember it's the one with the two in it. So Raspberry Pi imager, no filtering. Scroll all the way down and use custom. Yeah, I don't like the way it does this. Home, KDE, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't remember the, what it was last on either because I've got it in my downloads folder. Right, it must be that one then. Be interesting if this is a 64-bit OS, which would actually probably be slower than the 32-bit that I was using just now. Let's hit open and next. And this is the EMMC drive. Nice that my pointer gets big, like on a MacBook. And next and right. Let's go for it. So again, should be nice and quick. Now, while it's doing this, this is really for industry and also you can't get it in most of the territories that watch my videos, but it's just interesting to try and it's nice to see another bit of hardware and see how it works and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna skip verification, write complete. So let's shut this down and we can boot up the zero. Is it gonna work? just thought what I should have done is copied any BCM file that referred to this. Oh, hopefully it's going to work. Yeah, starting to boot. Yeah, never in doubt. Let's log in for the first time. And it's 64-bit this, so it maybe won't run as fast as the 32-bit version. All of the configuring was nice and quick. What have we got on the software? So, ultra lightweight desktop, let's go with that and confirm and install and okay we'll go with chromium again so if i do reboot it didn't give me a graphical user interface but let's try start x yeah now we're talking mm, feels pretty snappy obviously this is just the menus but uh, it is very lightweight customized look and feel desktop preferences so have a look at the file manager, see how quick that comes up. Yeah, that was all right. And then we go through folders. Yeah, pretty good. So I was thinking we'd try the Chromium web browser, but booting it without the OS, which is a feature of DietPy. And I showed it in a previous video. So if we go for DietPy config, it does feel snappy. Auto start options. So automatic login. So you see here we've got browser kiosk. So we go for that. And we'll let it log into raspberrypi.com. And we just do normal user. And see what happens. So exit and exit and let's shut down and restart again so all of this has been in real time because it just is running really well and if i press the button does that start it yeah looks like it does it's booting up is it going to boot straight into the browser it looks like it's loading it up this time yeah still not recommended Unfortunately, 64-bit and the Chrome browser was too much for it because if I press anything on the keyboard or try and use the mouse, nothing is working. Oh well, it was an interesting test. I might try and put something else on this, maybe RetroPy. So thanks to EdaTech for sending me this to test. I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.